often does it happen that shingles can actually come off? And how strongly are they attached to the roof? Yeah, well, it's infrequent, I must admit. Um, it, it, the times when it does happen is usually when it's either early in its life cycle. So for instance, when the, the tars haven't had an opportunity to stick to each other and to bond, or when it's late in its life cycle, when it's deteriorated. Now there are different qualities of shingles and, um, and, that, will, and there are, that will prevent or restrict that or minimize that from happening. So for instance, recently we've seen new shingles that have come out whereby they have a, a fabric strip underneath in the nailing area. So that fabric strip helps to prevent the shingles from coming out. It's not really that the, the nails come off and then the shingle falls off, it's that the shingle lifts up and tears through the nails. So the nails are still behind there. But if you have this fabric nailing strip there on the, on the better grade of quality shingles, that will uh, prevent that from happening. So that's one of the things. And then it is, um, and it's, it's the installation. The installation is also a key to preventing that from happening. So shingle manufacturers um, require four nails per shingle. Ourselves, what we do is we do a minimum of six nails per shingle. So that is 50% more nails, and it gives a greater chance, greater um, to, to prevent that from uh, happening where they might lift off. But it's also the location of where the nails would go. So there's a limited area where you have to nail it in. And when you nail that in, in that area, it not only catches its shingle, but it catches the shingle below it at the top of that shingle. Yes, so it overlaps. So essentially each shingle gets two rows of nails in it, one in its middle and one at the very top of it, which is buried underneath that other shingle. So each shingle would have a minimum of eight nails to it. For us, it's a minimum of 12 nails per shingle. And that's what helps to keep it. So it's, it is not only the shingle, but it's also the shingler and his application of it. Sometimes those that are not as experienced or not as knowledgeable or not even aware of that will go beyond the area where they should nail it. Or if they're in too much of a rush, they might just go and not even, not even notice that. And that is as often the reason for shingles to blow off as it is in its deterioration of the shingle. So the location of the nailing is critical, you know. And today, the newer shingles in where they have the tar is on the bottom of the shingle on the underside where that helps to keep that shingle on better because the shingles tend to lift up or and come off and blow off. Now that tar line, which is a continuous line of tar, helps to keep it on. And one other thing is that the design of these shingles are now, the, the laminated shingle that is, the design of that shingle is one full three foot long piece versus the older, more traditional three tab shingles, which while it is a three foot long piece, they're individual tabs of one foot each. And that one foot individual tab, what happens is as they dry out, the, the part between the, the two tabs called the key will expand and it will dry out and, sh and water can get under that. And those things often you will see as they get later on in life, they will, the wind will flip them over and they will break them off. So when you have a continuous three foot sheet and it's all tarred along the bottom edge, that one foot piece isn't going to flip off yeah, and, and come it has off. More resistance it's it's on just it. far more resistant with a full three foot long tar strip versus individual sort of one foot tar strips. It, it helps to keep it on much better.